Well, well. The reveal for Grand Theft Auto 6 is finally behind us at this point. And while the game looks incredible, and I can't wait to get my grubby hands on it just like everybody else since the reveal, it's left me and many other GTA fans foaming at the mouth for more GTA content for us to get our hands on in the meantime, as we're not really going to get to cause any chaos in the state of Lanita till sometime in 2025. But if you paid close attention in 2023, there was a brand new GTA game made entirely by fans of the Rockstar community that released under everybody's noses this year that I honestly don't really see anybody else talking about a whole lot as the year has gone by. This new GTA title slash mod that's the subject of today's video is called Grand Theft Auto Sendako Chronicles. Sendako Chronicles is a total conversion mod for GTA Liberty City stories made entirely for the PSP. With its own unique story following the rise and fall of the Sendako crime family during the events of the game it's based off of, giving a totally different perspective on the gang wars happening around the time of the end of the century. The story itself takes place in 1998, relatively at about the same time as Liberty City Stories takes place in the 3D universe, making this essentially a type of episode from Liberty City in said 3D universe, even though that's kind of already what Liberty City Stories was. But anyway, with the timeline of events that you play through running in tandem with the main story of LCS and a bit of it taking place afterwards, this gives the mod authors an interesting direction to take for this whole thing. Seeing as you can go plenty of other directions with a total conversion mod, this gives the mod authors a chance to flesh out the seedy underbelly of Liberty City just a bit more utilizing this game's story. But before we cover the rest of the story and what it's about, I just wanted to take a second and say real quick, thank you so much for watching this video. Okay, back to the story. GTA Sendako Chronicles consists of three different acts taking place across the three islands of Liberty City. But unlike other GTA games of the 3D universe, where you pretty much only played as one single character throughout the events of those games, in Sendako Chronicles, we get the opportunity to play as multiple protagonists throughout this game's story, with the very first act of this game having a step foot into the shoes of none other than JD O'Toole which you may recognize as one of the side characters early on in LCS's main story. I mean, who wouldn't recognize this guy? He first makes an appearance in these freaky tight leathers. Oof. Just look at him. What the fuck are you wearing? What? This? Oh yeah, and these are totally an unlockable outfit in this, by the way. But anyways, JD just got out of prison and is making a new name for himself in the streets of LC, with the help of Polly Sindaco and the rest of his crime family, of course. And JD's goal is to make a name for himself within the Sindako family, while they themselves are at war with the various other gangs scattered around Liberty City, like the Ferrellis, and specifically at this time, with the Leones. JD is tasked early on by Polly Sindako after a few introductory missions to the game to act as a double agent of sorts and infiltrate into the Leone crime family by meeting up with the scumbag himself from LCS, Vincenzo Silly who gives us a few missions to perform to get our name brought up over to Salvatore Leone by making our way up into the crime family. And all of this is happening around the same time that Tony Cipriani shows up back into town in the main story of LCS. And even at some points we play as Tony himself, albeit the missions that you play as Tony Cipriani are basically just missions poured over from Liberty City Stories, which I found a bit odd, but still, this mod is based off of that game after all, and at the end of the day it does make sense to kind of tie the two games together. But if you think it's odd playing as a pretty disposable character from LCS, don't worry, they don't divulge from the main universe's overall storyline, like JD's not the hero of this game or anything like that, so without spoiling anything, there's a reason why there's multiple protagonists for this mod, if you catch my drift. Tony, the first drink's on me. However, the following acts of the main story consist of us playing as Marcus Sindaco, and we play as him throughout pretty much Act 2 and 3, and follow along his path of destruction across Liberty City, as he and the rest of the Sindaco crime family fight for control over the remaining territories across Liberty City. However, as you play as Marcus, we essentially get to see the events of Liberty City stories play out from an entirely different perspective. Seeing the Sendako crime family's fate play out over the course of the game as their fate in the 3D universe was kind of left up in the air by the end of LCS. 
Now, usually whenever I review these types of total conversion mods like this, I'll give a basic rundown of the story or their missions or something like that. However, the story for this game is long, like way longer than I initially expected. And I feel like the synopsis I gave is a pretty basic rundown in of itself of the majority of escapades you'll be pulling off in this game. But one more thing I want to talk about here when it comes to the story is that you also have two different difficulty settings that you can choose from right at the start, both with soldier difficulty and boss difficulty, which is a great inclusion for some form of replayability. Now it's not going to drastically change your game, like not every single mission is going to be totally different, but you are going to see a lot more enemies on screen, and a lot of them are going to be packing way more heat for certain missions. But me, I personally played through this on soldier difficulty, and hell, I even found it to be a, quite a challenge throughout some of the missions especially towards the end game. But I mean, that's kind of in line with other GTA titles of this area when it comes to the weird difficulty spikes like that. So I'll definitely give it a pass. Now, besides the main campaign that you can play through, just like every other mainline GTA title, there's a ton of side content for you to dive into across Liberty City as well. Like, of course, you got your normal diversions like Vigilante and such, of course, but then there's also a ton of new side content that you can get lost in, like the pimping side missions that you unlock at an early point in the game, with these pimping missions playing out almost identical to the ones that you'd find in Vice City Stories. And the one thing that I noticed with these side missions and quite a few others is that your progress will save even if you quit out of that diversion, which is a nice little quality of life feature if you ask me. There's also a ton of new races that you can find from various different payphones found around the map too, with each one requiring you to use a different type of vehicle. You got your bike races, car races, and so forth, and each island that you've progressed through in the story will unlock new races for you to complete. And they're all replayable for extra money, which is nice. Plus, if you want more vehicle shenanigans in your life, which, I mean, it's GTA, who doesn't? Then there are a ton of new vehicle challenges scattered around the map for you to mess around with, too. Things like helicopter challenges, RC missions, which are damn fun, and even off-road challenges. Or one of my personal favorites is the Lose the Heat challenge, which is done by hopping into this BF injection found on the north side of Staten Island. And once you hop into this baby, you have to get clear across the entire island with a five-star one level on your ass. And with the LCS's police system being derivative of Vice Cities, the cop behavior in this is incredibly aggressive, which makes for a hell of a chaotic challenge. Plus, there's a ton of new Rampage missions scattered around the map as well, so you're never going to run out of opportunities to blast away at the local populace on this mod. I mean, that's everyone's favorite GTA pastime. I mean, man, just even writing this and saying it out loud is just going to put me on a watch list somewhere. FBI, open up! And hell, even all the hidden packages and stunt jumps have been redone around Liberty City, just to give you another reason to explore around the map of LC once more. But don't venture too deep into the shadows of this decrepit city, as there's some mythical beings that have been spotted by the locals that you may want to watch out for. And oh hey, do you remember that snapshot collectible from GTA San Andreas? Well, that feature is also available here as a little side diversion for you to complete, and it works exactly like it did over in that title too, letting you GTA snap your way across various landmarks across the city and snap some sites to unlock some extra goodies after all is said and done. Plus, another little feature from San Andreas is the fact that you can buy multiple apartments around town that you can use to save at. Although, this part I would say is kind of disappointing. Mainly for the fact that you can't really walk into these apartments and do anything inside of them. They're mainly just places for you to go to, save your game, or even a car that you come privy to. And early on in its main story, you're also going to be able to unlock a brand new side activity called Vendetta Missions. Now, I mean, these missions are essentially assassination missions found from other GTA games, but with a slight twist. These are all going to be targets that have wronged the Sindaku family back in the old days. So we're just sent out to go ahead and take these guys out. Easy money. Plus, the guy who provides these missions to us is also another fence that we can use to buy weapons at a slightly discounted price. Plus, these are also weapons that you typically won't find at most of the ammunitions across town. And another thing too is the more Vendetta missions that you complete, the higher tiers of weapons get unlocked, meaning you can get an RPG for cheap after doing these missions throughout the course of the story. Plus, more Vendetta missions are going to unlock the further you progress in the story, giving you even more of a reason to return here to help out with the family. And not only do you have all of this side content to play through, but you also have the business estate system from Vice City Stories also brought over this mod in a way. Now, keep in mind, this feature is unlocked at a later point in the story, like more or less at a point in Act 2. But the basic gist of this is that you'll be able to clear out opposing gangs from their business fronts 
by destroying the vehicle that's parked outside. And by doing so, it's gonna trigger a gang war for us to complete, to pretty much take over the said business. Now, since this feature is from Vice City Stories, which released after LCS, there's gonna be some slight caveats to this new feature. But once you take over that business, you're gonna be given the option to hand over said business over to Uncle Polly, or just keep it for yourself for a little bit of an extra revenue stream. Unfortunately, you won't be able to manage these businesses at the storefronts that you take over like in VCS, but there is a Sindaco's headquarters that's downtown that we can use instead. And this is cool because you can actually manage all of the businesses that you've taken over across town, check your statistics on who owns what, and even gather any revenue that's made from the shops that you've taken over. Meaning you'll have a steady stream of revenue throughout the system, which is nice because the money payouts for the story missions are basically chum change which just like Vice City Stories almost incentivizes you to take over businesses if you want to keep up a good revenue stream in this game. Mind you, the only thing you're really going to be spending money on in this game though are, are guns, but I mean, trust me, with how many combat encounters you're going to be getting into, you'll be spending quite a bit of it as you go throughout the game's runtime, as almost every single mission is going to have some sort of combat encounter. Another cool little feature about the Sindaco headquarters though, is that you can also hire bodyguards that cost about 200 bucks each, and they'll assist you in combat in both free roam and in some story missions I've found. And this can definitely help out in later story missions if you find you're dealing with way too many enemies, or if you're playing on that boss difficulty I mentioned earlier. Cause like I said, the game gets incredibly hard for absolutely no reason within the final act. And you're also going to be able to buy several different business assets, just like in the original Vice City. And from these business assets, you'll be able to complete even more missions down the line. And completing these asset missions will, in turn, give you more revenue streams in the game, making this almost feel like if Vice City Stories, like best features and Vice Cities, just kind of like set in a Liberty City setting. And I, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm all for it. However, one of my favorite parts about this mod has got to be by far the soundtrack because the soundtrack that the team curated for every single radio station that you come across in this game curated fucking bangers for every single one. And mind you, GTA 3 and even Liberty City Stories both had pretty good soundtracks of their own, mind you. But each radio station in Sendaka Chronicles has something that you would most likely hear on the radio in like your own hometown around the time for each respective radio station. And not only do they fit the vibe of the GTA universe, but they also fit perfectly for each radio station genre. Not only have each of the original radio stations from the game been retrofitted with new music for each one, but there's also entirely new radio stations available for you to bless your eardrums with. Now, unfortunately, there's no Rise FM. I was a fan of Rise FM from both GTA 3 and LCS. However, we get the replacement of Rise with Orbit which is basically a house music radio station that features different songs from Daft Punk, Crystal Waters, and a few others. And is probably one of my favorites in this mod. Or maybe you're a fan of K-Dust. Well, this game's got retro vision for your classic rock needs. With some great tunes from people like Led Zeppelin, The Clash, Dire Straits, and more. Or maybe life's got you down and you need some soul in your life. Then Liberty Souls got you covered with some more great hits by Whitney Houston, D'Angelo, and, and a few others. And there's so, so many other great options for music found in this mod. Like every time a different radio station came on, I just sit there and listen to it for a little while and see what was available. And I was just wowed every single time. Easily, easily one of the game's best features in my opinion, just because you're gonna be hearing music from the radio for a good chunk of the time you're running around the city. And since we're on the subject of audio, there's one other thing that you can do in this game, which I feel makes it stand out amongst other GTA mods released in the community. At the beginning of the game, besides choosing a difficulty option, you also have another option to have an AI voiceover. You serious? Now, I'm personally not a fan of using like AI voice acting and stuff like that, especially because of how jarring it sounds in so many different circumstances. However, I feel like in this mod, it actually did an okay job throughout the half of the story. What is the fucking plan? Just go crush everything and everyone, then get our boys, or not? Not for sure. 
Look here. I mean, given this mod team is a small studio, it's a small exception to be made for a full GTA storyline consisting of multiple characters we all need to like actually listen to. You know, it, it makes sense to actually use AI in that sense. And like I said, it works pretty damn well for the most part. A lot of the characters actually do sound pretty convincing. They sound a lot like their original voice actors. Come on, come on, give them a little. Damn, Frank, you totally lost your strength. JD, punching the shit out of these debtors is a job for thugs way dumber than me. You be quiet. With a mouth like that, be careful or someone will shit in it. But then you got people like Salvatore Leone or 8-Ball. Hello there, Joseph Daniel O'Toole. Mr. Salvatore, it is so thrilling to me. Relax, relax. And don't even call me Mr. We are trying to build friendship here, isn't that right? So, you want to be our mole in the Sindaco family? Or many different other people in the game. Like, they just, they, they sound off. Like, it just doesn't sound like them. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But overall, it's definitely an interesting experiment because I haven't really seen any other mods or full-on total conversions like this actually use AI at this scale. And also, the great thing is, too, if you do find it too distracting or anything like that, you can always turn it off at any time while playing the game using a button combination that the game tells you about pretty early on. Nice. But yeah, having the option to turn it off and on is totally awesome because like I said, the voices throughout the game are an entirely mixed bag. But that's not the only mixed bag that we're talking about here. As overall, I personally found this mod to be, well, just okay. I mean, it definitely sounds like I've been praising it for the most part, and I definitely have. It's a hell of an achievement for the team to develop a mod like this, especially for a PSP version of Grand Theft Auto. And even if it to be developed and ran on original PSP hardware, like, damn, dude, that's dope. I'm sure it wasn't an easy task to do all of this, and especially to create it on such a limited engine. But the story overall was what the mixed bag was for me. And for the most part, I mean, the story just consists of us working for the Sendakos, which really were just a relatively underdeveloped gang in the first place. And it's not really surprising to me in that sense that the storytelling just doesn't get too deep in its own regard. Since the Sendakos themselves were relatively left to the back end of the main universe's plot points, it didn't leave the mod authors a lot of wiggle room in terms of telling their own story with the Sendakos. It felt like the mod authors would give a bit too much exposition for past events in certain scenes, that it felt like we were just kind of like learning history lessons about the Sendakos when talking to certain characters. So I don't know, a bit of the writing and the AI voice acting just didn't really help with the storyline for me at all. It just, it, I don't know, it just, it was hard for me to give a shit half the time. And really the mission design didn't lend into that much either. Um, it just felt like a lot of the story missions and even side missions felt very repetitive over the course of the story. I don't know, there wasn't really a whole lot of variety when it came to the missions, at least until the end game. But it kind of sucks when you save your bag of tricks until way late into the game. And again, it could have been due to the limitations of this already limited engine that the devs had to work with. And again, I really not trying to knock these mod authors down a peg at all. This is just my opinion when it comes mainly to the story of this mod. Because the work they put into this project overall is nothing short of incredible work in the GTA community for being made solely on these developers' free time. And the bite-sized nature of these missions lend it to being best played on a handheld hardware like they developed it for anyways. Which works out perfectly for me, because for myself, as someone who's very busy half the time, like for being a dad, holding a nine to five, while also trying to pull out some banger content for you all whenever I can. It can be tough for me to find some time to sit down and play a game like this when I have so many other things going on. But like I mentioned earlier, this game was developed for the original PSP hardware, which means you have some options when it comes to playing this bad boy. Now, I haven't owned a PSP in years personally, it's been a very long time. However, you can always use a PSP emulator, which is what I ended up using. P emulator that I used, PPSSPP, which is like the most popular one out there on the market. This one is available for both PC and Android. So of course, having the availability to have it on like both on your computer or even on the go, and also having the options for upscaling the game to higher resolutions on both platforms. That means you can literally play this game anywhere you need at any time. And having that accessibility of this mod makes it even better for me since there's so much replayability within this mod as well. 
And one thing I did want to point out too is since this is running off the PSP version of LCS, of course, and since you can use it on the PSP emulator, that also means you can use a lot of the different hacks that are available on PPS's PP. There's things like higher texture packs that you can get for Liberty City Stories or even a right thumbstick patch that you can use as well. And those can easily be ported over and be used even in Force and Daco Chronicles. And oh yeah, I haven't even mentioned throughout this entirety of, you know, the whole video. This game is free, by the way. Like, you don't even have to own a copy of Liberty City Stories to play this at all, which is a nice addition. But one thing about that, though, is hopefully that it doesn't step too many toes on the corporate overlords over at Take Two. But if anything, this mod itself just shows the passion that Barcode Studio has at bringing a new, authentic Grand Theft Auto experience to the palm of all of our hands. And because of the ease of access and the replayability of this mod, it's an easy recommendation for me for some quick GTA content to play while we wait for GTA 6 to come our way. But when it comes to Sendako Chronicles, while it's not the best storyline to write home about, it's, however, a genuine Grand Theft Auto title when it comes to just about everything else. And it was solely made using Liberty City Stories as a foundation, and developed even for the same platform that LCS was released on. Which, in the GTA modding community, and in my opinion as well, it's a major achievement in of itself. With mods being developed for these engines for ages at this point, it's incredible to see entirely new games being developed for this franchise by loyal fans who understand what makes a Grand Theft Auto title so damn good. The team who made this mod, like I mentioned earlier in the video, are actually the same ones who developed a whole nother GTA title for GTA 3 a few years back as well, titled Ferelli Redemption if you're interested in yet another fan-made GTA title. That one doesn't have AI voiceover, but it's still a whole nother GTA title that you can check out. And I'll leave Barcode Studios website link down in the description with both of these titles found on their website. And hell, if you're interested in revisiting Vice City before GTA 6 finally arrives, then check out my other videos on mods for GTA Vice City. I recently talked about GTA Long Night, which is a zombie survival simulator set in BC. Or you can also check out a harder version of Vice City with a ton of Easter eggs in it for my coverage of Dinosaur Bites' fantastic mod, GTA Titan Vice. There's so many great mods out there to fill your time in if you're still satiating for more GTA content out there, and I got more that I'm going to be covering in the near future. But I also want to talk about mods for other games over here from time to time as well. If you want to stick around for that content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, as this GTA mod coverage has become a bit of a series over here. And of course, hit that bell icon to see when I post over here to YouTube so you don't miss out on what's going on. If you like the video, also make sure to like it or dislike it, either way it works, gotta please that algorithm after all. And leave a comment down below on what you thought of this mod if you checked it out yourself. Um, or if you have any other suggestions on GTA mods that you want me to check out in the near future, definitely leave them down below. Anyways, that's it for me everybody. Thank you for checking this video out of pretty much everything else out there on the platform. I really appreciate the hell out of it. And I appreciate the hell out of the support this year as well. Like, seriously, I can't thank you all enough for it. I really do appreciate it. All right, that's enough talking for me, everybody. I will see you next time. Blado out.